some of my newer videos. I was kind of playing with more of a comedy style and I still want to get into that. Um, just to, because I just want to do some silly stuff. I don't want to be like all, you know, stoic and everything. Um, that was my friend Danielle. She's from New Jersey and she was my one of my very best friends from uh, high school and we're now friends again or hopefully we just remain friends we sort of got lost or something so something I wanted to talk about today which I'm getting a lot of um, questions and requests and encouragement over is um, just different language stuff <clears throat> um, of course some people are going to be really sensitive about stuff anyway so no matter what I say the people will always take something the wrong way and all, all I have to say to that is um, some people actually look for reasons to be insulted. Um, don't do that because I'm not going out and, and insulting people. I don't just go out to people and just say, you know, you suck or you whatever or, or just, you know, attack people. I don't do that. Um, but if you're always looking for reasons to be insulted, um, then you're always going to find reasons to be insulted and you're always going to feel insulted. And if I was afraid of being insulted, I probably wouldn't have done anything in my life. You know, I'd probably just live in a room and just, I don't know, nothing, you know? What the heck is that? Well, when I was younger, very young, um, I was actually very interested in different languages. And um, I was very open to everything. And the first language that I learned by myself was German. It was actually really easy, and I took to it really quickly. Um, I usually don't tell people about it anymore because, like, the minute like they take something the wrong way, they yell like the most really cruel things and stuff, like Nazi and blah blah blah. And like, <laughs> I'm so not a Nazi. Um, both my grandfathers fought in World War II, and one of my grandfathers got shot in the head. And he suffered in a, in a hospital for about two, three years. So he didn't know who he was because of that. Yeah, he lived. <clears throat> um, I'm also uh, partially Native American, and I have a daughter who is half Chinese. So of course I speak Chinese, and I have lived in China. And I'm sure I've said this before. But <clears throat> when I was younger, well, that's kind of been like this most of my life. I've always been, uh, not always, but usually, the first person to do something. Like, before friends happen, before they're, like, whatever's going on, I'm kind of, like, I'm into things before they happen, before they become trans, or before they become popular. And when I was younger, I used to listen to music in different languages. The reason I did that was because I opened myself up. I wanted to just not limit myself to one way of thinking or one way of feeling. And music is sort of universal. It really doesn't matter what the words are about or what language a song is in, as long as the feeling is there, the feeling is there. Then of course, you know, I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> and uh, I many times would listen to different music from all over the world. They were either they were, the songs were fantastic, the melodies were were so uplifting, or really just very clever, or the vocals were just you know just amazing. And a lot of these singers, songs, groups, whatever, were by people that no one had ever heard of outside of my country. But I found out about it just because I'm just very curious. And I've always been um, into also independent musicians who are like, not mainstream. And I listen to even like Erasure and No I'm Gay. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I don't have to say that. Anyway, um, I started to listen to Bimshin. Bimshin was favorite. I like to do several others um, uh, that were German, but also other languages. And a huge thing I noticed a lot was um, people used to pick on me a lot because of that. They would say things like, you know, why do you listen to that? Do you even know what it's saying? Of course, if it was in German, I'd be like, yes, I do know what it's saying. If it was in French, no, I don't know what, it, what they're saying. And do I care? No, I really don't. It just, I like the song. Well, by the time I was in college, I started to notice a bigger bigger trend that more and more people were starting to listen to music in other languages and I'm not just talking Spanish. Um, um, there was a huge amount of people listening to music from Asia, specifically Japan. Now I listen to J-pop as well. 
Um, I can't sing in Japanese because it's really difficult. The songs never, ever, I've never heard a Japanese song that rhymed ever. I've never once ever, ever heard a Japanese song that rhymed unless it was combined with either English or Chinese. Um, otherwise it never, ever, I've never heard a Chinese, uh, I mean, never heard a Japanese song ever rhyme. Although I have heard a uh, Japanese rap. No, that that was that had some rhymes to it. I've also had, uh, like, especially in my family, uh, they really could not understand why I listen to like different music and everything. But the ironic thing about it was after I started to do my own thing because I liked something because I wanted to because I liked genuinely liked to hear something, not because other people told me I'm supposed to like it, but because I wanted to listen to it because I genuinely liked it. Um, my brothers all do. This same thing. Now, now, not necessarily in other languages, of course, maybe perhaps opera, which is often in Italian, um, <clears throat> but they all are into independent type of music, like independent singers, independent local bands, independent rap, whatever. They are very much into that, and they're very much into finding like undiscovered talents and stuff like that. I started to learn Chinese when I was 18. Um, I, what happened was I, when I learned German, I I realized it was so easy, and they didn't have German in my school. They only had uh, French, Spanish, and sometimes Latin. And the teachers, which taught these languages, actually couldn't even speak the languages. They just knew the vocabulary words. And the the kids that went through the classes, uh, they came out of classes, and they couldn't even speak the languages either. So I didn't want to. I didn't have any interest to learn those languages at the time. And uh, I felt that I, if I wanted to learn a language, I really didn't need to go to school to learn it. I, because I figured it out myself. Um, the human brain is actually very adaptable, and it's very good at figuring out patterns. And I figured, uh, I started to use that part of my brain. Actually, anybody can do that. It's not because I'm like super special or something, but um, everybody's brain has the capacity to do that. <clears throat> uh, I, after learning, you know, self learning. Uh, German, um, I decided to learn Chinese because there was a huge statistical type stuff going around and I, I was thinking, you know, what other languages did I learn? What can I really push myself to learn? And uh, there's a huge, huge uh, population of Chinese um, globally. And um, actually, there's several different parts of the culture, or the various parts of the culture, subcultures, etc., which was really interesting. And they had like a whole other uh, film, film genre, and different like musicians and so on. So I got into that uh, purely on my own. I self-studied at home uh, in, when I was in college. I self-studied, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to study Cantonese or Mandarin because at the time uh, where I lived, there seemed to be a lot of uh, South Chinese, which is more Cantonese style of dialect. But uh, after going through several books, um, <clears throat> books, cassettes, CD-ROMs, um, there wasn't any real standard. Uh, everyone had a, each book was teaching in a different way, different pronunciations, and I thought it was so, it was just so hard that, I mean, I could watch the movies, and that, that was fine, or even listen to the music, but it was, it was so hard. Um, Mandarin was still was hard also, but it wasn't as hard as, as Cantonese was. Um, <clears throat> once I got the hang of the basics, um, I could grow from there. Now, I know that my Chinese is not fluent, so sorry. Um, I have lived there many times in China, um, and I noticed that whomever I'm around, whomever uh, I, uh, the people I'm with, I tend to pick up whatever dialect or their mannerisms and so on. So there's often times where certain things I do are just sort of very Chinese, and I have been um, picked on because of it like, in derogatory ways. But um, in China, it's not pe people aren't mean like that. People are really nice, um, <clears throat> although they kind of get excited about small things like. Um, I mean, if I just said, like, ni hao, like, people <laughs> think it's, like, great or something. And uh, I remember 
was going like on the train and I just wanted to go to the bathroom and I just wanted to get through some people and I was just like, um, like Bohais or something and the people are like freaking out, oh my god, she's freaking trying to get whatever.